As Rocket Lab's next generation Neutron launch vehicle gets closer to its maiden launch date, excitement around the innovative new rocket is growing. But as investors, it's prudent for us to also think about the upcoming potential risks for Rocket Lab and Neutron. Today, I'd like to tell you about a potential risk for Neutron that most people don't seem to be talking about. Most of the focus for space industry watchers right now is SpaceX's massive and completely reusable Starship vehicle. A rocket which many fans out there will tell you immediately makes everything else coming to the market pointless and obsolete. But what if I told you that the first and most immediate risk for Neutron is not actually Starship itself, but rather what Starship will do to the current workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. It sounds crazy at first, I know, but let me explain. Falcon 9 has been operating for 15 years now, and during that time, it has managed to achieve unheard of levels of scale and launch cadence. As space industry observers will know, when it comes to profitability for rockets, it's all about scale. If you launch a rocket once per year, that means the price of that single launch needs to cover all your costs on factories, manufacturing, launch infrastructure, staff, permitting, and much more. That's not even to mention the all the R&D money that went into developing the rocket that you need to earn back. A low launch cadence is a recipe for bankruptcy when it comes to a commercial space company. However, if you launch that same rocket 10 plus times per year, well, now you can afford to pay all those factory and launch pad costs, and then some. Launch it 15 times plus per year, especially a reusable rocket, and now you're looking at a money printing machine. Falcon 9 has already achieved an incredible scale. In 2024 alone, they launched 134 times. SpaceX currently charges customers about 70 million per launch, but due to reusability and this massive scale factor, industry experts believe it's actually costing them less than 30 million per launch, leaving them a profit of at least 40 million. So that's great for SpaceX and Falcon 9, but where do Neutron and Starship come into this? Well, an increasingly high amount of Falcon 9's launches are actually coming from SpaceX's own Starlink satellite constellation. In 2024, Starlink accounted for a whopping 91 of Falcon 9's 134 launches, and this trend has only been accelerating. A quick look at this chart by Payload Space shows the rapidly increasing percentage of Falcon 9's manifest that has been devoted to internal Starlink use. However, Starship is set to change all of that very soon. The plan for SpaceX is that Starship is going to take over 100% of Starlink launches as soon as possible. In fact, SpaceX's next Starship test flight planned for this week already has Starlink mass simulators on board that they're going to practice deploying to get ready for the real deal. So what the industry is going to be left with very soon is a workhorse Falcon 9 that has achieved unprecedented scale, allowing them to reach launch costs of just 30 million, which is suddenly going to lose 70% plus of its payloads. This will be happening while Neutron is still ramping up their own cadence, not yet having the benefit of scale themselves and therefore not able to launch quite as cheaply as Falcon 9. What is SpaceX going to do in this situation? In 2026, they could potentially have 180 plus launches of capacity, but suddenly the payloads for 70 plus percent of that capacity will no longer be there. Generally in business, when supply outstretches demand, the answer is to decrease prices. Could SpaceX suddenly dump over 90 launches worth of Falcon 9 availability on the markets at incredibly cheap price points in just a couple years? That's what we're talking about today. A bit ironic, isn't it, when you think about the fact that the vehicle most disrupted by Starship, at least initially, is going to be SpaceX's own Falcon 9. And before you say that I'm attacking SpaceX, I don't actually think this is a bad thing. I think 
when companies get scared to disrupt themselves. That's really when the beginning of the end comes. But companies that are brave enough to disrupt their own products generally in the long run do very well and continue to innovate. What comes to mind for me is when Apple disrupted the iPod with their own iPhone. Obviously, the iPhone went on to be an immensely successful product in the long run. So I think it is a good move from SpaceX, even though they are disrupting their Falcon product most of all right now. That all being said, I do expect SpaceX to gradually scale down the operations of the Falcon program and do less and less launches per year as those Starlink launches do get taken over by Starship. I do expect this to be a gradual process over several years as, a, as opposed to just shutting off the entire program, going from 150 plus launches per year down to zero. And we've actually seen a tweet from the head of SpaceX's Falcon launch program saying that he personally hopes they're not launching Falcon beyond 2032. That's another indication that internally they are planning to phase out the Falcon program. Nonetheless, there probably will be some discounting from SpaceX as new competitors come online and those cargoes go away. That's just good business, but I do think Rocket Lab should be able to find enough payloads for their Neutron rocket to also be fine. A couple factors to keep in mind. Number one, nobody likes a monopoly, especially not the US government. They really don't want to rely on only one provider to get to space because, you know, that provider could just jack up prices to whatever they want as well. If there's a failure, then suddenly access to space for the government grinds to a complete halt. So they're really trying to support multiple new providers and have them come online and be successful. There should be room in the market for multiple launch vehicles. Hopefully the fact that Neutron is so much smaller than Starship will help out when it comes to cost for launch and maybe they can find a nice niche in the market launching that 13-ish ton to orbit payload where Starship is 100 plus tons. Whereas if you look at a larger launch vehicle, like say a new Glenn or even Relativity Terran R, if that does make it to market, those are a bit larger and therefore perhaps a little bit closer to the Starship vehicle and may have a little bit more difficulty carving out their own niche. Although it must be said that new Glenn has a pretty sizable backlog themselves and they haven't been struggling in that regard. Also important to keep in mind that there are a lot of competitors to SpaceX out there who really just don't want to be giving their hard-earned dollars to SpaceX for launch as well as handing over their precious satellites to be put onto a SpaceX rocket when those satellites are competing with SpaceX's own constellation. Talking, of course, about Amazon's Kuiper, as well as AST, maybe OneWeb, and there's a lot of other potential constellations going out there that probably don't want their launch dollars helping to fund Starlink. So those launchers continue to look for alternatives and Neutron should hopefully be one of the most reliable ones on the market. Third point to consider is that Neutron will be launching Rocket Lab's own internal payload, something like maybe 50% of Neutron's capacity they do plan to launch their own satellites with. So they don't necessarily need a ton of commercial or government contracts in order for Neutron to be a successful launch vehicle. Bringing your own payloads to the table drastically changes the financial structure. And as long as they can operate that constellation profitably, they can be completely fine with Neutron launching it. So if Rocket Lab needs something like 15 to 20 launches for Neutron to be quite profitable, maybe less even, and half of those are their own internal launches. Then we have government launches because they want to support a wide ecosystem as well as potentially SpaceX competitors. Suddenly it's not looking too crazy to me that Neutron does survive in this new world. So what do you guys think? Is Neutron done for? Is our SpaceX going to just cut the prices of Falcon by 50% as Starship comes online? And another factor to consider is capacity, because obviously Starship will take a while to get online, especially as they ramp up the first few years. It's common for rockets to, you know, go through several years of ramping, a few launches, a few more than 10 plus, then continuing on. Obviously, Starship has massive scale with SpaceX, and they should be able to ramp quite quickly but they also have a lot of demands on their rocket including of course starlink human landing which will take multiple refueling launches in orbit probably six plus elon has said they want to send missions to mars and they will i'm sure have many other customers out there as well it won't just be like turning a switch and suddenly we have infinite 
capacity of Starship launches. Not to say that there won't be any pressure on Neutron, I do think SpaceX will probably discount their Falcon as competitors come online, and it's going to be quite an interesting launch industry over the next few years as we have Starship, New Glenn, Neutron coming online, maybe Stoke down the line, although that, well, we'll talk about that another time. Fireflies MLV, personally I'm not too worried about when it comes to Neutron competitors. Uh, definitely going to be a dynamic field out there and with drastic changes over the next few years. I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. Is there going to be enough demand for Neutron? Are they going to have to cut their prices from that advertised 55-ish million dollars? How many launches do you think they'll be doing per year down the line? How many of those will be their own satellites? And how much room for non-SpaceX competitors is there really in this market? Love to continue the discussion down below. Uh, as I said before, this isn't just all doom and gloom, but I did think it's an issue that does deserve some attention. And hopefully it makes us all think a little bit more about the market. You guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.